Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about how you can level up your airbrush game. We're going to take it to the next level and use this tool as more than just something for priming and base coating. We're going to really get into it and I'm going to show you the tips and the tricks and the ways you can utilize it to its fullest potential. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vinci V style. If you're a longtime fan of this channel, you know I love my airbrush. I've integrated it in lots of videos and in lots of different points in the process, not just priming and base coating, but throughout. And using your airbrush, leveling up your skill is really a matter of two different things. One is techniques, and that's what the majority of this video is going to be about. When we head over to the painting desk, we're gonna get into all those tips and ways to get the most out of the tool. But the other part of it is the tool itself. A quality airbrush that's really precision machined with a nice fine needle really can make all the difference in how precise you can be. Now recently our friends at Harder and Steinbeck reached out to me with a project they're working on. With the invasion of the Ukraine and that ongoing war there, Harder and Steinbeck wanted to help. And they wanted to help those people who are most in need. The displaced, the suffering, the refugees, the women, the children, and so on, who've been pushed out of their country and are now left without anything to their name. Harder and Steinbeck worked with a local artist in the Ukraine who couldn't leave, who uses their airbrushes regularly to do all sorts of amazing art, including things like uh, the entire children's ward in her local hospital. And they made a special airbrush in her honor, focusing and using her art as inspiration for this infinity. It's a great airbrush. I've used it a lot. You're going to see it in this video. I absolutely love it. Now, Angela is her name. And they drew from Angela's heart, her art, to make an amazingly beautiful airbrush. Not only is it beautiful on the outside, but the inside is made of gold because in response to the war, Angela's art didn't get dark, but was instead hopeful, full of heart, and full of the belief that everybody does have good inside of them. And that's a beautiful message. Harder Steinbeck takes the profit from these airbrushes and gives it directly to a local organization that is, uh, that is working to take food, supplies, and other uh, important things down to the border directly. This isn't going to some big nameless charity. This isn't middlemen soaking this all up. Harder Steinbeck knows the two people who do this directly. They actually work with them quite regularly. Um, they literally load up their own vans and trucks with these supplies and drive down to the border to help those the most in need. So when you, if you were looking to get a new airbrush, if you were looking to have a quality tool, follow the link below to this limited uh, airbrush where you can both pick up a high quality product that could really do some amazing things, but also help out an incredible cause and those who are the most suffering and in need. All right, with that out of the way, Let's get to those aforementioned tips and tricks. Let's head over to the painting desk. All right, so I wanted to start here by talking about the airbrush itself. Uh, now, of course, with the airbrush, this infinity is based off the, this new airbrush is based off the Infinity model. So things like the cup is still removable. Uh, it has the standard sort of two teeth. You can backflow that by just pinching the little top. Um, it has the airflow control on the back, so as you screw that in, it restricts the movement of the trigger. If you have problems pulling back too far, you can always just, you know, twist that in and that'll stop sort of its, it arrest its movement. The inside of this thing, as I mentioned before, is completely plated in gold uh, because of the, the heart of gold uh, that uh, the artist talks about that she believes is within everyone. Uh, now, the trigger itself is, of course, there in the Ukraine colors with the, the yellow and the blue. Uh, and it has very, very precise movement. And generally, that's what's going to define a good airbrush, as we'll see throughout this video. You'll also notice there's an art design on the side. And this is some of the art from Angela. Uh, that was made right in uh, uh, after the uh, invasion of the Ukraine. So just beautiful stuff. Now let's talk about our first tip for getting more out of your airbrush and doing more precise work. So the first tip is thin your paint a lot more. Uh, this is one drop of paint to 10 drops of thinner. One 
to 10. Now I, know, I know, I know a lot of times people will say it should be like skim milk, but no, if you look at this, this is very, very thin. And there's a reason why that is, as you'll see. The other thing you want to do is it's in how you grip it. I put my thumb up under the trigger, my uh, index finger on the top, and then my middle finger gripping underneath. So I'm actually holding the trigger with two fingers. Uh, how you hold this thing matters a lot. As you can see, when you have a 0.2 millimeter needle, which is what this comes with, you can do really sharp lines. Now, theoretically, you can do something down to, you know, not much wider than 0.2 millimeters, but that's just not actually possible. You'd have to get your airbrush like right up against the surface and we have to be back a little bit. So the cone is going to spread out, but we work thin so we can build the color up. Now we can be precise with lines and we can build up the color. And that's what you're going to see me do here. You notice how I can hit the individual parts of the armor. And I want to talk a lot about trigger movement throughout this thing. I am just barely pushing the trigger down against my thumb, which is locked in place, and barely pulling it back. So it's the slightest movement. And you notice that I'm rocking it. One of the ways that we as miniature painters will use our airbrushes differently than how sort of traditional canvas artists who use airbrushes is we will do this rock and and spike mechanism think of your airbrush more like a normal brush so you want to be just slightly rocking the trigger just barely down just barely back and then you actually push the airbrush toward the thing you need to operate very, very close to the model. Notice how close I'm operating. I'm like an inch away from this guy, sometimes even closer than that. Now, when you have very thin paint, you might see, say, hey, I have some troubles with spider webbing when I do that. I understand that means you have too much airflow. If that's a problem, use that guard on the back to restrict your airflow so you can only barely pull the trigger back. Use the mechanism that's there. You'll see as I build up this red, I'm working very, very close. And that leads me to my next tip. Build up your colors. I think with the airbrush, we often work so fast and make these big jumps because we think, hey, it's an airbrush, it's fast, I'm supposed to just spray all over the model. But it doesn't have to be that way. There's no reason I can't work in these subtle gradations with very thin paint and build up the layers just like I would with the brush. Because then I can get very soft, very, very, uh, smooth transitions of colors really easily. And the key to working that close and working that thin is all in that trigger pull, that soft, slight trigger pull. Now, what not to do? Here I'm doing his face, and I probably should have done his face first, but here we are. Uh, either way, you notice I have a little bit of overspray. Always be aware of your cone, and this is an easy enough fix, but I'm going to show you better how to do this later in the video. If when you first try some of these things, you're not getting the same results, that's okay. It is tougher to get your airbrush to do the things I'm doing here. It takes time, and it takes practice, and it takes mastery of the tool. But just like with your normal brush, when you first pick that up, you probably couldn't do a smooth layer or you couldn't create a smooth glaze. Maybe that's still something that challenges you. But as you worked with that tool and learn how to use it and engage with its multifaceted nature, you became better able to get the effects you wanted. It's the same thing here. So don't be discouraged. Keep working at it. It is a powerful tool. It can do this. And remember those tips that I'm talking about throughout this video. 
As I continue to build up the face, I want you to see how close I'm working. And I'm still working in this 9 to 1, 10 to 1 thin ratio. The other thing you can do so easily with an airbrush to level up your skills is if you overspray one time, you can go back in and build in your shadows. The next, the sort of leveling up your airbrush skill is also a matter of using it for filters. Here, this purple red is thinned even more than my last color. This is like 12 to 1. And it's very, very, very thin. I'm just filtering this purple tone over the shadows. And then I added a tiny bit of black to just really build it up. And you can see how small I'm working. The airbrush is very close. You notice I'm barely rocking the trigger. I mean, we are talking the tiniest amount of airflow. That's what lets me work this thin. So you want to work very thin, work very close, uh, barely, barely, barely rock the trigger. Now, if you've ever had a problem glazing light colors, this is how you do it easily. Here I'm glazing some silver gray onto the edge of his chain sword. This with a brush would have taken me forever to get a smooth glaze with an airbrush it took me five seconds. I thinned down that silver glaze and was good to go. Now, sometimes, no matter how precise you are, you've got a mask. It is still a cone. Leveling up your airbrush masking is as easy as going out and buying some Silly Putty. Now here I'm using the AK version of this, which is just black Silly Putty, because I wanted to try it out a long time ago. You can just go buy the dollar egg. By covering it up, you can easily hit the areas you need to, even when you're being small and precise. Now during this sped up footage, the last thing I'll say is that no matter how much of a surgeon you are with your airbrush, there's always things you must do by brush. Use the tool for what it's good at. Here with the brush, I'm doing things like all the edge highlights, all of the texture on the leather, all those things where brush strokes are valuable and precise and needed. Your airbrush can never be the complete replacement for your tool, but by working thin, working close, barely rocking the trigger, and working in repeated layers to build up intensity of color, use the thinness to your advantage. With one paint, with one cup load of paint, you can do entire transitions. By doing all of that, you set yourself up to make your brush work easy and fast. There we go. There's our blood angel. Uh, he's going to roll over the top here. Uh, it was fun to paint this guy with the airbrush. This was a super quick process. This only really took a couple hours tops, and that's because I was doing a lot of filming setup and things like that. Really, I could probably get that whole thing up to this level in less than an hour to produce a really ultra smooth marine, and that feels pretty good to me. Don't forget, the link is down below if you're interested in the airbrush and helping out a really good cause uh, with, again, money that's, that's going directly to people who are putting it in action with those suffering and in need. This is a way you can do it while also getting yourself an amazing and, I must say, beautiful beautiful airbrush that reminds you every day when it's on your desk uh, just how important it is to have hope and to have a heart of gold even in times that seem dark or troublesome because there is always beauty in the world and in people's hearts. That's uh, I think a message we can all get behind. So if you liked this give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. We have new videos here every Saturday. If you're interested in upping your hobby game even further, don't forget there's a Patreon down below uh, where we focus on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. As always, though, I thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.